Hi guys, this is Techzilla. I'm back again with another quick video. This time I'm going to be showing you what's new on Android O, and I'll be showing you some of the hidden menus and stuff, developer options and things like that. And I'll tell you what my five favorite new features are. First things first, Google have said it's a much faster startup time. So let's hit the power button here. As you can see, it doesn't say powered by Android at the bottom. I'm timing this so you can see how fast it starts up. And here we go, we've got something going on now. And powered by Android and 15 seconds, approximately. So next, the lock screen. As you can see there, I'll place it down, I'll pick it up. It now has symbols under the clock instead of having all the individual notice, uh, notifications like it used to have on Android 7.0. So just to show you guys, I'm using Android O. Let's go into settings, system, about, we've got Android 8.0.0. This is the symbol that comes up when you do it. And supposedly when you hold this down, it turns into an octopus. Although I'm not having a lot of luck with it. There we go. And there's this weird octopus that they were teasing everyone with. I think the octopus looks better than the uh, Oreo cookie, personally. But that's just me, I'm a bit crazy like that. So next, another new addition. Where you'd have to swipe up from here to bring up your apps tray, you can do it from anywhere now. So I'll show you that again. Very nicely done. Another new feature is these dots, which you can switch off if they annoy you. Um, so if I click on this one, it shows you who the notification is from. I can do a new tweet, I can search, etc. So you can see Google Plus has also got a dot there. If I hold down Facebook, you've got App Info. If I hold down Play Store, My Apps. So you get the gist of it. If I click on there, I can navigate to work or home. So that's their nice new touches. So next thing, pull this down. You can slide the notification across, hit the snooze button, snooze for one hour, which is also very nicely done. Pull down the shade here as you can see very differently laid out now different color scheme you've got the night mode there of course which has always been there but as you can see it's a different style of color look at the animations just here see how the animations work very subtle but nice little touches another new feature is you can actually change the shape of the app of the icon sorry click on settings change icon shapes you've got square rounded square squircle teardrop let's go squircle because it sounds strange restarts and you can see these sort of very samsung like icons the way they it led up uh, sort of semi rounded square as you can see it doesn't work with all apps so facebook for example is still a square shape Twitter, they shrunk the icon down and put it in a white frame. So it's kind of a personal preference, if you are, you know, in my opinion. So it's all dependent on what you want. So another thing, you've got colorful widgets. So here's Google Play Music, because the color of his album art, that's the color of this background. This will change as the music changes. So another new feature is picture in picture. Now, Google are not the first ones to have done this. Samsung have been doing this for a long time, but I'll give you an example of it here. Let me pull this up, play that, put it into full screen mode, press play. Come out of there and you can see it playing here. As you can see, it's going all the way around. So I can switch that out whenever I want. And that can be on anything you're using. So you can have it open on anything. The reason I didn't do it with the YouTube app, 
is in order to use picture in picture on YouTube you either need to be a YouTube red subscriber so those of us in the UK and most of Europe we don't have that option or you have to be subscribed to Google Play Music Google Maps also works with picture in picture which is kind of it's okay but you've got this size screen which you know it's not all that so let's come out of this all together now let's go into settings and I'll show you what's changed here forget all this stuff I'll show you this, this is, they've, what they've done is they've condensed the menus down now so they're a lot more compact and take up a lot less room they've bundled more stuff together under certain headings as it were so there's your network and internet connected devices so you've got your bluetooth cast nfc android beam printing and so on apps and notifications so now here as you can see i've got 46 apps installed my notifications are here if i click on that so allow notification dots which you can see blink light which i've got off at the moment and swipe fingerprint for notifications which you all know what that is if i go into an advanced go into special app access your battery optimization device admin apps and you can read it for yourself there's a lot of stuff there if you go on picture in picture it shows you which apps are available with that so you've got youtube maps google play services google play movies and tv duo and chrome uh, battery now this has changed quite significantly so last full charge was one hour four minutes ago which is not correct because i switched the phone off for a while screen usage since full charge is 46 minutes but as i said ignore the actual figures they're not accurate so as you can see you can go down here and it shows you which apps have been using what percentage of your power I've got sleep after 30 minutes of activity set there so I click on that I can adjust it so I can make it very ferocious like a Huawei device or a Xiaomi device where it's 15 seconds you've got battery saver battery percentage so let's put that on so you can see I've got 49% up there now adaptive brightness come out of that uh, display now you've got your brightness level night light adaptive brightness let's go into advanced so device rotation font size display size ambient display so this is what i was showing at the beginning of the video wake screen when you receive notifications and lift to check phone sound it's all bundled under one so as you can see how i've got it set up so advanced that gives you an idea of what's in that menu now so storage let's go into storage so you can see i've used eight percent i've used 10.72 gigabytes out of the 128 gigs available smart storage which automatically gives you more storage as you go along by deleting certain things so the system before i set anything up comes with 7.6 gigs already used up security and location so your google play protect that's on the google play store most android devices have got that the more modern i think all of them have now basically when you download an app it scans it make sure it's safe and it's from a reputable source it's too much to go into in this video because you'll get bored out your head if you haven't already uh, lock screen preferences uh, add users from lock screen lock screen message so i haven't put anything on there as yet and of course i've got my fingerprints set up smart lock you all know what smart lock is so when you're at home it will stay unlocked if you have a bluetooth device connected you can set it up uh, encryption and so on i know this is quite long but i just want to show you guys what the actual menus look like now google services and preferences you all know what that is 
system languages time backup and updates so let's go into there you've already seen this from earlier on that's the system ui tuner if you want to know how to activate that you drop this down press and hold on the cog there and it will enable it so if i go into a status bar so this is basically what you can put in the status bar and work profile cast hotspot bluetooth etc always show percentage for the battery alarm and so on that's just something for you guys to experiment with you know it's a nice little thing and i've also enabled developer options now the reason i've done this what's interesting in here is picture color mode use s r g b this is supposed to improve the color balance i suppose it's not going to make give you more color range because it's not magical it doesn't do stuff like that but it is supposed to improve the balance of the colors or make them brighter or whatever again these are all hidden things in developer options uh, the one that really interested me the most keep going down is here the bluetooth ones so bluetooth version you can see there if you go into Bluetooth codec, now this really interests me. Because most phones have AAC or APTX, but this now enables to activate APTX HD and LDAC. The reason this interests me is my Sony MDR1000X are Sony made headphones, and LDAC is a Bluetooth system or codec used specifically by sony it's one of their own so if you click on that now i've got it set up as ldac what that does is that sends three times more information via bluetooth to those headphones very very high quality bluetooth signal and you hear things in the music that you don't normally hear it's just i'm being a bit of a square or a boffin or whatever but that's really something that um, interests me. That's probably my number one favorite feature. Because I'll tell you my top five at the end of this video. Now here, if you come down here, you can see Bluetooth audio bits. So 32 bits sample. See, it's too much to get into the technicalities. But here's another good one I like. So select Bluetooth Audio LDAC codec, playback quality. So this is best effort, optimized for connection, balanced audio and connection, and optimized for audio quality. Now, if you look at optimized for connection, it's 330 kilobits per second. And as you can see, the top best quality one is three times that. That's exactly what I was talking about. So I'll put that on there. So those of you who use Bluetooth headphones, especially the higher end ones that have APTX, HD, or LDAC, or things like that, or H APTX Plus or whatever, use, go into developer options and activate that stuff. As you can see, there's more stuff down here, which I'm not gonna get into massively. Come out of that. And of course, you've got your support and help and so on. There's a lot of other things hidden in the background, um, which you can't see. The, they've improved battery life. Apparently, I haven't tested it out yet, but I will do in due time. So uh, before I go, let me show you uh, one thing called notification channels. So if I swipe across slowly i wish it was a bit slower click on the cog wheel there click on all categories it's just an example i'm using twitter for this example as you can see i can finally tune which actual notifications i get so for example um recommendations on twitter if i click on that i can have it blink the light show the notification dot um, on the lock screen uh, and so on and importance is medium so if i put it on high importance it will make a sound low importance no sound or visual interruption so it goes quite deep into this very very deep 
which is you know it's a nice very nice feature to have very easy to fine tune it and that takes me to the wrap up section i haven't gone too deep into certain things because they're all behind the scenes and up it'll take too long to explain them in depth on video so i'd say my top five features favorite features and this is no, no particular order, but these are things I will genuinely find useful. I'd say one is picture in picture, although I do prefer Samsung's implementation personally. I like the fact you can change the shape of the icons now. Again, I think they've copied that from other OEMs because I know um, OnePlus have it already on their OnePlus 5. Samsung have something similar. So that's a feature I do like because you can change it. I just wish it was a bit more uniform because as you can see here, these apps haven't don't match the rest of them. So again, I prefer Samsung's one where it puts them all in that same shape square. Let me actually show you what I mean if I can. That's what I mean there. If you look at the uniformity of these icons, they're all exactly the same shape and exactly the same size. And Google, you still got a bit of work to do with that. So the fact I can change that, that's another, that's two. So picture in picture, app icon shape changing, that's two. Uh, three is being able to micromanage the notifications. I really like that. Where I can fine tune them how I want. Four has got to be in the developer options where I can actually change the quality of the Bluetooth output. And I can use my high end Bluetooth headphones. Because there's no headphone jack on this, as you all know. And I'm quite an audiophile. So that's definitely there. And my fifth one, what I say my fifth one is. I like this dot notifications and these sort of, so if I click on that, being able to see the not notification there, do a new tweet and a search and so on. So they're my top five. They're my top five favorite features. I hope you guys found this very useful and it helps you out if you haven't seen this stuff before. Videos dragged on a bit, but I wanted to be as thorough as I could without going into too much detail. Anyway, guys, this is Texilla saying thank you very much for watching this video. And before I go, I'll be reviewing this case next. It's a very thin, minimal case, probably the thinnest case out there for the Google Pixel XL and the Google Pixel. Very, very wafer thin case. That's coming up next. So definitely hit that subscribe button there. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video on all your social media because it helps me out, guys, as always. I'll also be doing a video on does the Note 8 actually need six gigs of RAM? Spoiler alert, it doesn't, but in my opinion, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And I've got, I've been doing some testing on my S8, uh, my two S8 Pluses, one's a six gig, one's a four gig. And I'll show you from screenshots I've taken why six gigs in a Samsung device is vital nowadays. So anyway, guys, that's it. I've already said that. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Peace.